Yo guys, me Patrick LeVar back again with another Blender Octane video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to add a fisheye lens into your scene. Let's get straight into it. All right, guys, so I've got a camera in my scene here and we're basically aimed it right here on this tire. So I wanna change this camera into a fisheye lens. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on your camera. You're going to go into your camera and make sure we have our correct tab here and it's going to be up here on the top, lens. Right now the lens type is set to perspective. I'm gonna change that and change it to panoramic, okay? When we do that, you're gonna quickly notice here, our render got a little bit weird, right? So we were on perspective, that's what it looked like, and then we switched it to panoramic. Now that's what we're getting here. So from there, we're gonna also scroll down and we're gonna scroll down to Octane camera, camera type, change it from lens or panoramic to universal. Once we get to the universal, you're gonna see another one here, camera mode. On this camera mode, we're gonna go ahead and take that and switch it to fisheye. And then you can clearly see now, boom, we've got this fisheye happening. And that's pretty much how easy it is to set up the fisheye look. But let's, de let's, de let's go a little deeper here. So if we go here, use as the uh, universal camera, we have fisheye mode right i'm going to take this and i'm going to f-stop and i'm going to crank this up to like 28 because a true fisheye lens doesn't have a lot of depth of field okay so i'm going to crank that up and what i'm going to do here we're going to take our camera and i'm just going to get a little bit closer here i'm going to go ahead and press g and i'm going to bring that in you can see we're we're getting pretty close right look at that right up on there and then we got the angle over here we have fisheye angle if i come over here and show you guys the fisheye angle is going to be how much angle we're putting in it or how strong that distortion is going to be. So if I back out of here, you can clearly see if I start cranking on that, we're kind of backing out like, like it's getting way more distorted and vice versa. If I come here, now we're taking that distortion away. Now we're taking it away and now it's eh, a little bit of distortion there. So I'm gonna go back to, was it 240 was I think the default. So there's a, a really heavy, a heavy angle on there. Then we also have here, fish type we got circular or we can go full frame now full frame is basically what it says that we're, we're we're taking away that circular look and, and going more into a full frame style setup now if we go back to circular you see i have this little bit of a black edge here uh let me quickly render something out and show you something now when i render this out you notice we weren't seeing the exact same thing that we saw in the viewport the viewport was a little bit different and now we also see we've got this black edge around here. Now, most traditional uh, fisheye lens will have that black circle. Back in my days when I used to skateboard back in the late 90s and, and you know early 2000s, we would use a fisheye lens and it was pretty much signature that this, everything around the screen would be black and you would just have that, that fisheye bowed lens there in the front. So if you don't like this, you wanna remove it, we can come back over here. And if we go down to right here, we go down to harden vignette and it'll hover it. The circle fish, the circular fisheye, whether the area outside of the lens is rendered or not. So there we can take away that, that little edge there. So if I come back over here and we fire up the render again, you can see a little bit of the black edge is happening there. And if we go to hard vignette, boom, it takes it away. But then we have different projection types. Now you can probably play with these and you can see what they do. Each one has a little bit of a different look here. Ooh, that's really, I like that one too. And then we have, even have an orthographic. Wow, it's right up on you, right? And another note, you just see how it popped out. Now it's extremely close up. We don't see the fisheye effect when we're not in render mode. You only see it when you're in the render mode. So keep a note of that. Okay, so actually this render mode is looking a little bit closer to what I wanted to, to actually look like. But let's say you want the old school with the center black border on the outside. To set that up, which first, I couldn't get rid of that. I was like, how do I get rid of that? And now I figured it out. So I'm gonna go back and I wanna go ahead and turn that back on, click on my camera, and I'm gonna turn on hard vignette and I'm gonna keep it on circular. And then what I'm gonna do here is render out another one. And here is my circle, but we can clearly see it's not taking up the whole frame. Like, why is it sitting like this? Now, I haven't figured out how to make the circle smaller or bigger, but I do know I guess if I was shooting with the 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio with the fisheye, I think this is what we would see. So what I wanted to do was I would just go over here and let's go to change my, my dimensions. And I'm gonna change my dimensions to, let's just go 1920 by 1920, more of a box. And then I'm gonna go ahead and render that. 
And now there it is. Now you can see we have the full circle. So basically it, it comes down to your aspect ratio of what you're rendering out your final output size, whether it's going to be the full circle or not. In this case, there it is. So if I went back to the 1920 or if I went down to something even, you know, different, you don't want that. I would suggest probably turning that off. Now, for those of you who stayed this far in the video, I'm going to take it up another level. Now, if you look at some of these cheaper lenses here, like this guy for 25 bucks, you can clearly see the edging is really horrible. It doesn't look clean. We got discoloration. Some of these have like some lens uh, chromic aberration on the outside. Here you can see some other stuff. So I'm going to show you guys how we can recreate that really quickly. So if I jump back into my render here, one other thing I want to show you quickly, right now you can clearly see that we don't see the whole thing. If I hold down shift and mount and move around, you can see this is not really affecting the shot whatsoever. So that's just something to also have in note. If I hold down control, I can zoom in and zoom out so I can see everything fully. So that's just another thing to take note of. But what we want to do now is add that chromic aberration on the outside. And a good way we can do that, if I come over here onto our end tab, and we go over to our Octane Post Processing, right? I'm gonna jump over here and I'm gonna go ahead and enable this. And I'm gonna scroll it down. We're gonna scroll all the way down here to Post Processing Lens Effects and Chromic, Chromic Aberration Intensity. I'm gonna uh, just change that. So if I jump back out here and you look, now look at this, along the edge here, we have that discoloration. That really, really sells the effect. Now we can crank on it and get really crazy if you're going for something really abstract. There's what it was before. And then I'm just creeping in a little bit of it, just about something like that. That's a little bit noticeable there. So you've got that, something you might wanna add in. And then I can add in a little bit of bloom here from Octane. There's our little bit of bloom. I'm gonna add in also a little bit of a uh, cutoff here to kind of clamp that down. Something like, maybe like that. And just playing around, okay, I gotta stop because I'll get I'll get too deep into that. Oh, I even have some, if you look down here on the bottom, we got this lens effect coming through here and that's the lens flare. So here's the lens flare, so look, boom. And you can even play with that if you really wanted to try to sell this effect. But I'm gonna go ahead and kill that right now for now, we don't need that. And there it is, boom, a fisheye, a look inside of Blender Octane. This file will be available for all my members down in my community. And again, if you guys like stuff like this, I would definitely suggest taking a look at our Blender Octane School community. It's a whole community full of Blender Octane users. We're very passionate about what we do here with Blender Octane. We've built in the tight niche community. But even if you're not into that, you can definitely check out the Discord, uh, share it. So I wanna see what you guys create with this fisheye. So down in the Discord, post up some photos. Let me see what you got going there.